Belmont, Massachusetts, May 28th, 1919. Dear Mrs. Wiseman, Your letter of the 13th May came to hand today. You said that you had written before, but it was not answered. Well, it was, because I never received it. I removed from Lewisport to Boston and will be back during the summer, so my address is as you see above. I want to sympathize with you in your very deep sorrow that you have had undergone in losing your dear boy in such a far off land. I have a great deal to be thankful for in that I came back unharmed and well. I was with your boy when he passed to the great beyond. I was not there exactly when he breathed his last, but he might have died a minute later. I remember the scene. Well, it is vivid before me and fresh in my memory. It was on the 29th day of September. On the 28th, we had gone over the top at Ypres and had come back about 15 miles that day. So on this morning, we all got out of our dugouts that we had made the previous night. We had no rest, only what we could snatch for two or three hours during the night on the cold and drenched ground, often getting from our resting places cold, wet, and hungry. We all thought the Newfoundlanders would be in the support line, seeing that we had already been nine days in the trenches and one day on the attack. But after we had joined up and properly arranged in our platoons and began to advance, what we discovered was that we were in the front line and would be in close quarters with the Germans. Your boy was a Lewis gunner, and an excellent shot at that. He carried the gun himself, going along seeming unafraid of nothing. He was in number one platoon. His sergeant was the revered W.J. Parsons of Freshwater, and he gave him a good name. My platoon was a little to the rear and to the right of number one. We were to advance up a slight incline, we did so, and when on the level we discovered that we were being shot at by Germans. We had to double and run then. We down flat, up again and to run, to escape the bullets and to get in such a position that the Germans could not take sight of us. However, we passed by a German cemetery and continued down slight slope. It was here that your boy got hit. We had to stop owing to severe machine gun fire from the enemy, and as we stopped, one man of my platoon noticed a man lying either dead or wounded about five yards in front of me. He brought the matter to my notice, and I rushed to the spot and discovered that it was your son. Of course, it was not in my place to attend the wounded. We have stretcher bearers for that, but I had to attend to him. I told my men to proceed if they could while I tried to nurse him through. He fell on the side of a shell hole just as he was about to get up and run. The other of the platoon saw him, caught the gun from him, and ran further ahead. He was in a dangerous place to attend to. The Germans saw me working at him and tried to take many shots at my head while I was there, but thank God they did not hit. Well. He was hit. His pants leg was full of blood. I took my knife and ripped it off, and a great quantity came out. I took off his puttees and unbuttoned it all around. I discovered a small bullet hole on the outside of the right leg, about four inches from his hip. I thought, well, that is certainly not dangerous, but where did the bullet enter? I examined him and discovered to my great dismay that it had entered in his stomach on the left side about two inches from the groin. It had done its fatal worse, and besides entering those vital parts, he had lost all his blood, hence the unconsciousness. Then I aroused him. He opened his eyes and spoke. He recognized me and spoke as if arising from a sleep. I said, Will you have a drink? He said, No, not now. Oh, yes. I said, Do take a drop. It will help you so much. 
Then I unloosened his water bottle and put it to his mouth. He drank all of it and felt thankful. I then banished him and he lay as if sleeping. At last I had to go. My time was limited and I had already lost a lot of ground for the others were way ahead. I roused him again and lay him in a comfortable position. With a knapsack for a pillow, and his face looking up peacefully into the great vault of heaven. I said, Wiseman, my dear boy, cheer up. You'll soon be home. He said, Yes, Corporal. Goodbye. I wished him a goodbye, and a lump rose on my throat. Could I say anything else? I don't think so. It was the sweetest word that could be spoken home. Yes, he's home. Someone told me lately that they had buried him, there as he lay dead and cold. Where his grave is I could not say, but could find out that very spot for you if I were in Belgium. Cheer up, dear mother. He is home at last. He is in heaven, the true home. He was a brave lad and played his part well. He had no suffering. He was hit one minute before I saw him and then he was very peaceful. He was at first restless and asked me to turn him. That is, after I aroused him, but otherwise he suffered nothing. Well, dear mother, I know you envy me for those last few minutes with your son. If you had only been there, I know that is what you are thinking, and I wish you had. Perhaps you would feel happier if you had seen him die. But mother, God was there and the angels were watching there. And even if the bullet could take away the life of his body, nothing could take away the immortal soul from his God and the great company of angels. Never mind, let us live there in the future so that when God calls us up, we shall be able to say those around, Goodbye, I am coming home. And if so, you and I shall meet Herbert in that happy shore. I trust that this letter, which I feel will be a help to you, will reach you in good time. And if I have consoled your sorrow in any way, I know that I am more compensated, and even although I may spend days in writing a thousand pages. I shall never do for you half as much as I did for giving your boy a glass of cold water under shell fire in France, and with Germans pointing machine gun at my head. Well, goodbye, and may God be with us. If we never meet here, Herbert, you and I will talk it over in heaven, won't we? I am your loving son in Christ, W.J. Wolfrey.